Tonight, we're learning about the tragic residential fire in the uh, Metro East. Now, it happened last weekend and claimed the lives of two people in a News 11 exclusive. Laura Simon spoke with the victim's family and tells us why they're saying the owner of the building needs to be held accountable. Those two people inside, Lisa Farmer and Stanley Scott, did not make it out alive. The fire happened just before 5.30 in the morning on January 20th. She's my hero. She went back in. She went back in. She went back in. Family members say Farmer went back in to rescue her disabled neighbor on the second floor. Scott had arthritis and didn't have use of his right leg. He used a wheelchair and walker to get around. He was not able to escape from his unit as the building went up in flames. I spoke with Scott's younger sister who tells me he celebrated his 56th birthday earlier that week. My mom, um, I don't even hardly have time to grieve trying to take care of her and through this process and it's just been very devastating. I've been through trying to get him out of this building. There's no help. I've contacted the Department of Human Services. I've contacted everybody to try to help me get him out of here. The wind chill more than 10 degrees below zero at the time. John Hipskind is the attorney representing the families of the victims. Family did indicate to us that there was no working heat in the in the facilities. They're using a kerosene heater, which I think caused the, the house to engulf so fast. They've also provided me some pictures of the inside of that house, and I could I could tell you from those pictures that uh, the, the house was not certainly up to code. This is what's left of the home. The owner of the property, Wade Wicks, told me over the phone he doesn't do on camera interviews, but he did say the building had smoke detectors as well as fire extinguishers. As far as a fire escape goes, family members tell me these stairs right here were already rotted out and impassable before the fire happened. Unfortunately, this tragedy just happened a week ago. What we've heard is from the family, and the family has told us the opposite, that there was not smoke detectors. We've asked Mr. Wicks if he would repair the fire wicks. My mom has volunteered to even pay for a fire escape to be built because uh, we knew my brother was up there. They had a kerosene heater trying to keep warm. He didn't even have heat. They had to keep their own self warm. We bought my brother a, a heater for his room, but it was a safe heater. Mrs. Farmer was trying to stay warm by burning on a hot plate, boiling hot water to try to keep warm in her room. Her attorneys want this tragedy to serve as a reminder to other landlords and building operators. Justice in this case is sad because there's no amount of money that's going to bring back these folks and that's what the, the families really need. Wicks never responded when I asked if there was working heat. He did say on the phone the fire started in Farmer's room because of a hot plate and he wants people to remember not to use faulty heating sources. He went on to call the fire a bad tragedy and abruptly ended our conversation saying he had no other comments at this time. Reporting in East St. Louis, Laura Simon, News 11.